Hey everyone, welcome to Up One Late DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm participating in the Fourth Friday Challenge hosted by Lisa of Our Gray House and Sarah from Juju B DIY. Links to their channels as well as the playlist are in the description box. So, keeping with this month's theme of Fall, Harvest, Thanksgiving, my projects today are quick, easy, and inexpensive. Almost all supplies are from the Dollar Tree. So first I'll be using these four for a dollar pie pans to make a faux pumpkin pie. I'm sure you've seen other versions of this. I made a larger one a few years ago, but wanted a smaller one for a new side table display. So I'm just gonna paint the white side of the lid with some burnt orange paint, and I'll give it two coats. With floating medium and burnt sienna, I will shade around the edge to give it that baked look. I'll put the lid back on the pan before I shade. Dipping my brush into the medium, working it into the bristles, then side load with the paint, stroke it on my plate to get the gradient of color. Keeping the paint side of my brush to the edge, I'll just shade completely around the perimeter of the pie. When it dries, it'll be slightly darker. And now I'll seal it with some Mod Podge. And I'll set it aside to dry. This is the only project not made with Dollar Tree items. So I also want a slice of pie. So I'll use some forming foam. I'll grab a handful and I'll flatten it to the thickness of a pie slice. To smooth out the top a bit, I'll place my parchment over it and I'll use my brayer to roll over it like a rolling pin. Indiana Jones inspired me to try this forming foam. I just love her, so creative. So now that I have to the thickness I like, I'm gonna use my long blade. It's not really sharp, so you don't have to worry about cutting yourself with it. Anyway, I'm gonna cut out a simple triangle from the foam. I just push straight down and it gives me a nice clean edge. I'm just trying to smooth out that dent I made, which is pretty easy. This foam is very malleable. I like it. For the top, I'll curve my blade a bit and just press straight down like this. I'll use that bit I just cut off to form the crust. I just flatten it a wee bit and then I'll use my long blade to give it a clean edge and then I just push it onto the edge using my fingers to make it stick and to form the crust and then I'll cut off the excess. I'll use my long blade to make an impression of crust on the side of the slice just by pressing it in just a little bit to leave that mark there. And of course I do it to both sides. Then I'll make ripples in the crust by pushing a dowel into it, just pressing down, making those little ripples. And then it'll need to dry for two days before I paint it. For the crust, I'm using Ceram Coat Acrylic and Latte. I'll give it two coats.
For the fiddling part of the pie, I mixed burnt orange and a little bit of burnt umber. I wanted a darker color than on the pie pan. I think the pie pan is a little too orangey. And this will get two coats as well. I'm shading my crust with honey brown and a little bit of float medium on my brush. I'll have all the supplies, including the colors and the brands in the description box. And I'll float the pumpkin part with a little burnt umber right along the crust. That will get darker as it dries. And I'll speckle it with burnt umber by dipping an old toothbrush into the paint and running my thumb over the brush. I add some to the pie pan too. Using light spackle and a decorating bag, I'll add whipped cream swirls to my pies. I'm just doing one in the center because the spackle kept lifting like it didn't want to stick to the top of the pie, so I figured I'll stick with one. Same issue with the pie pan, so just one in the center of that as well. I'm happy with that. I saw these little bottles and jars at Dollar Tree, so I thought they're perfect for making faux cream in a bottle and pumpkin butter in the jar. Super easy. Um, mixing up some acrylic burnt orange with a little bit of water and I'll pour that mixture into the jar and then I'll roll it around until the entire jar is completely covered. Then I'll pour out the excess and I'll turn it upside down to let the rest of the excess paint drip off. I did have to do this twice to each one because as it dries the paint shrinks. For my cream bottle, just white paint and a little bit of water and I follow the exact same method. These would be really cute on a tiered tray too. I'm just gonna rest this bottle on a little cup. That way I can reuse uh, any of the excess paint. I'm adding these vinyl labels that I cut with my silhouette to the jar and the bottle. I like that this jar has a checkered lid. I wanted three jars, but they only had two. So I'll make do. These labels went on nice and easy too. Ta-da! To embellish it a little bit, I'm tying a bit of baker string around the neck with a shoestring bow. I'm keeping it simple. And my cream bottles get their decal too. So my next DIY, I'm making a pie pan sign. This pan is from the Dollar Tree. It's about seven inches around. I'm gonna make it look like enamelware by spraying it with white Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer. I designed my center in Silhouette Studio and I decided Mumsy makes pies as well as pumpkin butter. So I'm going to place that right in the center of the pan. I'm adding some color by mixing some latte and some seafoam with some glaze. I'm mixing it on my plate and I'm using the glaze because I want a translucence to the color so it's subtle. And I'll just brush the pie part 
with my latte. And I'm using a clean brush to remove the paint from the black vinyl. And the pan will be seafoam, same process. I'll use a cosmetic sponge to add black to my rim. And to make the pan look worn, I'll add little chips here and there with my sponge and the black paint. Since this is meant to look like enamel wear, I'll spray seal this with a clear gloss. My last DIY is a simple sign. With this pumpkin patch sign, I'll paint my bakery sign, which I'll use as a backdrop for my display. I removed the twine from it, and rather than fill in the holes, I'll just flip them to the bottom. I'll base coat it with white, two coats. It's still a little streaky, but that's okay because I want it to look distressed and old, so that'll work. I cut the stencil for my sign and I'll line it up and burnish it on. With Mod Podge, I'll pounce over the lettering before I paint. This keeps the paint from bleeding under the stencil. Each line of text will be a different color. I'll alternate my paint, starting with latte and then seafoam in between. and then I'll peel off all my vinyl. I think this is really pretty, but I want the letters to stand out more and look more hand painted, so I outline them with Hippo Gray.
you get the idea. And I'll just dress by dry brushing with charcoal. and I'll lightly sand to add to that faded appearance. And to finish, I'll spray with clear matte sealer. These DIYs will be a nice addition to my Thanksgiving decorations. They're simple and affordable, and I'm really pleased with them. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please be sure to check out our host channels and the playlist. They're in the description box. You'll find loads of creative inspiration there. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you're so inclined. Tick the bell for notification of uploads and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.